This video provides guidance for the safe handling of mammalian cell cultures. It is intended to supplement the formal instruction provided in each institution and each laboratory. This video is not a substitute for a safety training program. Tissue culture work is an important component of the modern biology laboratory. This activity raises two concerns. The safety of the worker, because the cell line may contain an infectious agent, and the integrity of the cell cultures, because contamination may ruin the science. Basic tissue culture work is a daily routine in many laboratories. Mohamed Miri could probably perform it on autopilot, but he knows that no cells can be guaranteed to be non-hazardous. Good work habits are important for good science, as well as for safety. Mohamed makes sure that everything he needs is in the hood prior to starting the procedure. Moving in and out of the cabinet increases the risk of contamination, as well as the risk of exposure. Mohammed protects himself by wearing a lab coat and gloves. The cabinet's sash provides eye protection. The pipettes he uses are aerosol proof and he avoids splashes by discharging the pipette against the flask wall. Pipettes go into a bleach solution before being discarded as biohazard waste. After each use, Mohammed decontaminates the work surface with alcohol. Of course, any spills or splashes are cleaned up right away. He then finishes the decontamination by wiping down the surfaces with a 0.5% iodine solution. Mohammed lets the hood fan run for a few minutes in order to remove any airborne contaminants. As a secondary precaution, Ultraviolet light exposure is used to ensure that the work surfaces of the cabinet remain sterile. Dr. Christine Cricket Seidman is processing blood in order to establish a new lymphocyte cell line. Cricket is seeking to identify the defects in the genes responsible for causing familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a disease which causes death in young athletes. She obtains her blood samples from all over the world and knows they run the risk of being contaminated with HIV, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, or other blood-borne pathogens. Cricket also knows the serious hazard that an exposure to or accidental injection with blood samples represents. For those reasons, she does her work using biosafety level two practices and techniques. When mixing fluids with a pipette, Cricket takes great care to avoid aerosols or splashes. All tissue culture work involving infectious agents is done with disposable pipettes. After spinning the sample, Cricket prepares to isolate the lymphocytes in order to immortalize them. The vacuum trap containing a bleach solution to kill organisms is placed on the floor, protected from accidental breakage. The lymphocytes are ready to be infected with Epstein-Barr virus, the virus that causes mononucleosis. Cricket used to count the cells at this point to assure a consistent number. However, experience proved that estimating works equally well. By eliminating the counting procedure, she's increased her efficiency and reduced potential exposure. Epstein-Barr virus is mixed with media and antibiotics. 
Cricket calls it the EBV soup. Transformation is about to begin. Kathy Doherty is preparing to mince tumor tissue from a mouse. While this work does not require BSL-2, the practices for maintaining quality science and for safeguarding the worker are identical. Whatever the task in the mammalian cell culture lab, these are the principles that will serve both science and safety. Kathy knows that planning is important for good science as well as safety. Remember, moving in and out of the cabinet increases the risk of exposure. When handling mammalian blood or tissue, assume that infectious agents are present. Completing the procedure doesn't mean safety is no longer an issue. A thorough cleanup is as important as vigilance during the work. Decontamination before the procedure protects the science. Afterwards, it protects the scientist. And proper disposal protects other workers. And it's always important to wash your hands when completing a procedure and before leaving the lab. I think that when one is using safe procedures, particularly within the tissue culture uh, arena, that one is actually increasing the likelihood of sterility. Um, that is, by being organized and having the necessary reagents and equipment within the tissue culture environment, that you can rapidly move cells and decrease the time in which they might be exposed to potential contaminants. Hence, by being efficient and safe, you actually are probably increasing the sterility um, of the tissue culture environment.